Hello traders, welcome to Leading Forex YouTube channel. And we are here again with another episode of our tutorials. And first of all, let me say a big thanks to all the subscribers on this channel. You guys are wonderful. I appreciate your messages that you sent to me on email, WhatsApp, Telegram. In fact, all the other avenues through which you send me your messages. I appreciate, I appreciate, and I say, God bless you. And thanks for the encouragement. I pray that whatever led you to this channel, you will find it. Or whatever you've been looking for that made you to come to this channel, you will surely find it. Is that okay? Good. Now we will continue from where we left in our previous episode. Those of you who watched the episode four of our training, you would realize that we talked about the history of Forex. And in the history, I promise that in my next lecture, we're going to talk about the banks. Yes, the banks. I promise that we were going to talk about the banks in my next episode. So today we're looking at the banks, those who actually control price. Others also call them the super banks. Okay. There are others who also call them the inter banks. We need to know how they operate so that as a retail forex trader, you will be able to understand what is happening in the market and understand it well. Is that okay? Also, I promise in that episode, in case you haven't watched the episode four, I will encourage you to go watch the whole playlist, okay? The whole playlist is a beginner video, actually what you should look out for all the, the training and all that you will need to become a successful trader. That is what we've been coming your way with. So far, so good, and we are on course. So there's a whole playlist, and this video is part of the playlist. So you can go to the beginner video of the playlist, and you will see Forest Training for Beginners. That is the playlist. Watch the whole playlist, and I'm sure you will come to understand where we are and where we are going. Is that okay? So we'll be talking about the banks, the big banks, the super banks, the interbanks. Is that okay? Now, if this video is your uh, video that actually brought you to this channel, then uh, you may want to talk to me or you may want to have one or one discussion with me for one or two. Who knows? In case there's anything like that, after watching all the episodes and training and you still need mentorship, okay? You need someone who is experienced to actually walk you through what this whole forest thing is all about. I am available, okay? So you can reach me through this means. If you also want to get in touch with me or contact me for anything, please, my Telegram ID is Kofi Dollar. On Telegram, you can reach me at Kofi Dollar. Uh, you can also send me an email, leadingforexgh at gmail.com leadingforexgh at gmail.com. And then also you can send me a WhatsApp message. And with WhatsApp, that is plus 233-246-136609. You can also place a call. I mean, you can call me on the same number, plus 233-246-136609. All right? So if you need that one-on-one -on -one mentorship or you have something to discuss with me, you can reach me through the following means or the above means I, I, I showed you, okay? The above means I showed you. The recent means, just get in touch with me and let's do the talking. Is that okay? Now, enough of the sermon. Let's go straight to the topic for today. All right, the banks, the super banks, the interbanks, whatever you call them. In my previous episode, that was episode four of this playlist, I told you, I was going to tell you about some super banks that actually control the forest market, that control the forest price. Is that okay? Good. If you are ready, let's roll. Now, these banks, I told you, are many, but the major players are about seven. Let's see them and see. Uh, I may not be able to say they are only seven because there might be new ones coming up. Okay? So for now, the major players, the ones that are worldly known, are these ones on your screen. If you are watching, they are the ones on your screen now. And 
The first one I'll talk about is the City Bank, the City Bank. All right. So they are the first I'll talk about. They are one of the big banks that control the price of the forest. Okay. The price of the forest market is controlled by City Bank. We also have JP Morgan. Okay. We have the JP Morgans. They also control price. All right. JP Morgan. That is another big bank there. We also have the UBS Bank. The UBS Bank. We also have the Barclays Bank. We have the, uh, the Duce Bank or the Dutch Bank. We also have the Goldman Sachs, the Goldman Sachs Bank. We have the HSBC Bank. And then we also have the Bank of America. These are the major banks in the forex market. These banks control the price of the forex market. They determine where price should go. They decide, not us, okay? If you've been told that it is you, the retail traders, that decide where the price of the market should go, then that is a big lie. It is these banks that determine or decide where the market should go or where price should go. So the Citibank, JP Morgan, UBS, Barclays, the Deutsche Bank or the Dutch Bank, uh, Goldman Sachs, the HSBC, and then Bank of America. They might be new ones, but these are the major players. Is that okay? Now, these major banks, what they do is that they decide the price currencies should be sold. Okay? So these big banks I have just mentioned, what they do is that they sell, they sell currencies to other people or other institutions. And that is what we're going to look at. Is that okay? We're going to look at the other institutions that they sell to. Is that okay? So these big banks, what they do is that they sell currencies. They decide and determine how the price of the market should go. So they sell to large commercial companies. The big banks I have just talked about, what they do is that they sell currencies to large commercial companies. And what I mean by large commercial companies, for example, Apple. Suppose an Apple want to make a purchase of products or services from China. They go to the big banks. A company like Apple, who is the manufacturer of Apple products, like an iPhone, a MacBook, and those others. So a company like Apple, if they want to buy anything, from a, any country, or if they want to buy the services of any other company from a different country. For example, if Apple want to buy products from China or Japan, if they want to buy services from China or Japan, Apple will need to buy some currencies. They will need currencies. Supposing if they want to buy from China, they will need yen. Okay, they will need a currency called yen. If they want to buy from Japan, they will need uh, Japanese yen also. So they will need yen in order to be able to buy those services or goods that they want to buy from China or Japan. Is that okay? So like I told you in the episode four, the, the whole commodities that we have in this world are priced in the US dollar. But if you hold a different currency, like the dollar and you want to buy from China, you need to convert your dollar into Chinese yen or Japanese yen in order to be able to make purchases. So these large companies buy currencies from these banks. They go to these banks and then they buy those currencies at wholesale price. Remember in episode four, I told you that these banks, they sell the currencies at wholesale. Wholesale. So these companies, which are large commercial companies, they go to the banks and then they buy at wholesale price. And then they, they use that to do their transactions. Is that okay? Good. Aside that, we also have government, various governments that buy goods and services from other countries. For instance, 
I am in Ghana. If Ghana want to buy, I mean, the government of Ghana want to buy crude oil from Saudi Arabia or from any other country, the government of Ghana will need to convert Ghana's currency, which is the Ghana series, into the foreign country that he is about to buy from their currency. Although the price of the product will be priced in the US dollar. So he will need to get the equivalence of the US dollar in whatever currency he is buying from or whichever country he's buying from. Is that clear? So if Ghana want to buy crude oil from Saudi Arabia or want to buy crude oil from the US, then we need to convert our Ghana cities into the US dollar in order to be able to make the purchase. If Ghana government want to buy rice from Thailand or China, we need to convert our Ghana city into the US dollars or into whichever country we are buying from their currency. And then the government will then be able to buy whatever you want to buy. So various governments, UK government, the US government, the China government, mention them, all the governments, they buy currencies and then they use it for running the affairs of various countries. That's what they do. So these government institutions or these governments, they also buy currencies at wholesale from these major banks. Is that okay? Please, I'm going to tell you something. So you need to pay attention to this explanation. Now, already we know that large companies buy from these banks at wholesale. Governments also buy from these banks at wholesale. Again, we have central banks of various countries. For instance, if you go to England, we have the Bank of England. If you go to Japan, we have Bank of Japan. If you go to the whole of Europe, we have the ECB, that is the European Central Bank. So these central banks, like the BOE, the BOJ, the ECB, and the rest, they also buy and hold currencies as safe haven. Is that okay? They buy and hold currencies in order to use them when they need rises or arises. So these central banks also hold currencies as safe haven, as a way of escaping recession, as a way of revamping their economies. So the banks in various countries, the central banks in various countries also hold on to certain currencies. So they buy them in large quantity and then they hold on to them as safe haven. So Ghana, for instance, we have the Central Bank of Ghana. They have the US dollar as our safe haven. The Bank of Ghana, if you come to Ghana, we have Bank of Ghana. They hold on to the US dollar as our safe haven. If you go to Nigeria, the Bank of Nigeria or the Central Bank of Nigeria is holding on to the US dollar as a safe haven. So many countries and the kind of currencies they hold on to. But in Africa, most of the country's banks, I mean, the central banks are holding on to the US dollar. Is that okay? So these central banks also buy currencies and then they hold on to them as safe haven. Is that okay? Good. Now, these central banks also buy from the main banks or the major banks, which I mentioned, which are the CT, JP Morgan, the UBS, the Barclays and the rest. They buy from them at wholesale. Again, we have the spe uh, speculators and these speculators, they are also people, listen carefully, there are people or institutions who also buy and hold currencies with the hope that those currencies will appreciate or will gain value. Then they can resell them to make profit. Is that okay? I'm going to take it again in case you have not understood me. There are institutions or companies that also buy currencies at wholesale price from these banks. And they hold on to these currencies with the hope that those currencies will appreciate in price. They will actually gain value. They will have extra profit. Supposing I buy US dollar today at maybe 1.00. And then I hold on to 
the US dollar 1.004 for two or three years. And then my US dollar today in two or three years time will become maybe 1.50, 1.50. That means I have made a profit of 0 0.50 on the US dollar. Because I bought just $1 at 1.0. I held on to the $1 for three or four years. And then the dollar gained or appreciated to a price of 1.50. So if you look at the scenario I'm trying to show you, if I have to write something small for you to see, what I'm trying to say is that I buy US dollar at 1.00. Those watching the screen. And then after three years or four years, the dollar appreciates to 1.50. That means I'm going to make a profit of 0 0.50. Is that okay? So this becomes my profit for holding on to the, one, uh, the dollar for one, uh, years. I mean, three years or four years, I am making profit on it. Is that clear? So there are also institutions that do that. They buy and hold. They buy and hold on to these currencies. And then once they appreciate, they sell them off and then they make the profit. So that those people are the speculators or the speculators. The buy and hold. Now you will come to understand that the forest market, which you and I are doing as retailers, almost all of us are also doing the same buy and hold. Of course, that is the truth. That is what we are all doing. We buy and hold currencies as well, but ours is online. But all these retailers I just talked about, the large commercial companies, the government, the central banks, the speculators, these people are all offline. They are all offline retailers. Is that okay? Listen carefully. These are all people or institutions that buy currencies from these major banks at wholesale and they buy them offline. They are not online. They are not doing the transactions online. The large commercial companies do not come online to transact. They just, they have the partnership with these banks already. So DS is to just communicate to these banks and then they make the purchase and it is offline. The governments, the various uh, governments that buy these currencies at wholesale, they buy them offline. The central banks also buy these currencies offline. The speculators, there are some who buy them offline. And we, the other speculators that buy online are called the online retail traders, which is also known as spot forex. So when it comes to forex, if you've not been told before, listen to this carefully. If, if, if you've not been told this, when it comes to forex trading, we those on the internet who are actually selling and buying through brokers, I'll be talking about brokers very soon. We those who are on the internet sitting by our laptops or our mobile phones to actually buy and sell currencies online, we are very few. Our money do not add up to anything. Our money do not move the market because our money is just something very little, very small. When you come to the real forest market, because these companies and then government, central banks and speculators are the main players. They are the ones who actually buy in bulk. And the monies they use in buying currencies are so huge that when we add the whole forest market, I mean, we the retailers, we those online, if they add all of us our money, we will not be able to match the offline traders even a quarter. We can't match them. Are you getting my scenario? So when it comes to forest market, those of you who think that the forest market is just the software you are operating on the internet, you are damn wrong. You are totally wrong. If that is what you've been thinking, that the forest market is just about you 
downloading an MT4 or going to your trading view software. I might be talking about trading view in other videos. If you think it's all about those softwares on your mobile phone or on your laptop, and so you think that is all about Forex, then that is totally wrong. Because we those on the internet doing that are very few. Our money do not add up to anything. It's just a peanut. Because the real forest thing is happening offline. The real forest deals are happening offline. And this is the reason why some sentiment traders lose. Because the forex sentiment, which is uh, another section I'll be talking about when it, we come to the analysis, the forex analysis, we have three main analysis or we have three main structures. Those who do analysis, we have three main analysis, which is the technical analysis, the sentiment analysis, and then we have the news session, which is also known as the fundamental analysis. So when we come to that aspect, you will come to understand why some traders believe that the Forex sentiment analysis do not actually do anything because the big banks are trading Forex offline. The big monies are offline, not online. So if you are looking at the position of traders online alone to, to say that this is where the market will go, then you are damn wrong. But sometimes it works also. <laughs> it does work. Sometimes it works. So these are the schools of thought. People believe that we, the retail forest traders, we do not add up to anything in the forest market. Our money is just a peanut. The main money is coming from these people, the large commercial companies, the governments, the central banks, and then the speculators. You and I sitting by our laptop or mobile phone do not actually contribute anything. Our money is so little, too small when it comes to the real forest market. Is that okay? So now today, you know that these are institutions who are also in the forex business, but they are not online. They are offline. Okay, they are offline. So in the past, this was how forex was operated, offline. Until if you listen to my previous or my episode four video, there you will know how we came into internet forex. So the video, is there in this playlist. Just go to that video or I can put it in the description of this video. Just go listen to how we came into internet forex trading because all these were happening offline until we got the internet aspect of what? Forex. So these banks, before we will go online to trade forex, these banks decided that, okay, they will need other players who will actually come buy currencies and take them online or who will mediate. They are not actually buying, excuse that word. They are not buying, but they need other companies who will mediate between we, the retail traders on the internet and then the banks. Because we are not like these retail traders. We are not like, like the large companies, the government, the central banks and the speculators who can get directly with them and trade. We, our monies are very small. Our monies are just $100, $50, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, $50,000. And that is no money to them. So in order for us to be able to also trade, to also buy from they, the big banks, they need other companies that will be mediators. Listen carefully. They need companies that will come online, who will have a system online, and then be a mediator between we, those who want to buy online, and then these big banks, because they are the people we all buy from. These banks are the people we all buy from. So before we can buy from them, we don't have the big monies like these people here, the large commercial companies and government, we don't have the big monies like them. So they actually need companies that will serve as collateral or leverage between us and then the big banks. So when I say us, I mean we the retail traders on the internet. And so companies that 
came in to help mediate between we, the retail traders online, and the big banks are what we call the brokers. So the brokers are actually a mediator between you, the retail trader on the internet, and then their big banks. Are you getting it? So these brokers have signed contracts with the big banks. Is that okay? They have signed contracts with the big banks. And then these banks sell the currencies to them or they, 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 the brokers help us to buy currencies directly from the banks, okay, for a fee. Is that okay? That is what they actually do. They help us to buy. Let me put this thing off. Uh, good. So they help us to buy from the big banks. So the brokers, that is their work. So I will be uh, talking about brokers in my next video. So we're going to understand that we have different type of brokers. We have the ECN brokers, we have the market makers, and these brokers are all mediators who are helping us to buy from the banks. But we are not buying from the banks at wholesale. We are buying from the banks at retail because all these companies are buying at retail. So we are also going to buy at retail price, but ours will be online. So these brokers will be mediator between us and then the banks so that we can also buy at retail. Is that okay? Good. So to give you a quick summary of what I have just talked about, let's see how right from the big banks to we the retailers, how the whole system operates. And I'll share this uh, screenshot with you. So the forest market hierarchy, if you look at it, we have the major banks over here. Uh, those watching, I want to get the, the writing clear for you to see. So uh, we have these major banks over here. And then these major banks are the big banks I just talked about. Is that okay? Now, these big banks, they, 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 they interrelate or they interconnect with each other. They communicate among themselves. They equally sell currencies among themselves. These big banks. So Citibank can tell JP Morgan, okay, I need this currency. I have shortage of this currency. Uh, give it to me at uh, wholesale. So they buy, they sell to themselves at wholesale. Is that okay? So the USD bank can say, okay, hey, JP Morgan, I need maybe the US dollar. So what currency do you also need? Then they exchange among themselves at wholesale. Is that okay? So these banks, the system through which they are able to communicate among themselves to make sure that the rate they are giving to us remains the same across board is through this system known as electronic brokering services, which is the EBS. That is one of the medium. There's also another medium called the routers dealing 3000 spot machine. So these are the two electronic devices or systems which they use to communicate among themselves. I mean, the major banks. Is that okay? So the major banks are mentioned. This, this system here is what they use to communicate among themselves. If they are all taking the price of the US dollar down, they communicate among themselves. If they are all taking the price of the US dollar up, they communicate among themselves. So it depends on the supply and demand. They demand that these uh, retailers will be making, especially these retailers. These retailers here, let me show you the screen of these retailers. Yes, they demand that these retailers, the large commercial companies, the government, the central banks, the speculators will make. When the demand is huge, then these big banks or major banks will communicate among themselves and then they give a price that will be equal across board so that they can make profit. So the system or the the platform through which they do their communication is what is called the electronic brokering services or the routers dealing 3000 spot machine. And this system also display prices of each currency pay. 
to the medium sized and small banks. So this system displays the price of the currencies to the banks, other banks that are willing to buy, including governments, large commercial companies, uh, central banks and other banks that want to buy. This system will display the price quotes to all the retailers, including us. Is that okay? Good. So this medium size and small banks, they depend on this system in order to get the prices and then buy from the major banks. The same way the online aspect, I mean, the medium size and small banks and other companies, they are offline. But the online aspect of the forest market, we also, these brokers, which is known as the market makers, the ECM brokers, the hedge fund and commercial companies, they all depend on this to get to the major banks. And then if you look at the table, the retail traders, we are at the bottom. We are the last people at the bottom. You getting it? We are the last people at the bottom. So these uh, market makers, the ECN brokers, the hedge fund and commercial companies, they all use this system here known as the electronic brokering services, which is the EBS or the router dealing spot machine. They look at it, they go into that software to know what the major banks are saying. And then they communicate that with the retailers. So when you open your MT4, or when you op open your MT5, or when you open your trading view software, I will be talking about that software very soon, or any other platform that you use for trading, the price quotes that are displayed is actually coming from this electronic broking services. Your broker is displaying the price code from any of this, either the routers dealing 3,000 spot machine or electronic brokering services. These two platforms are what gives or are what give the information to these other people at the down here. So the medium size and small banks, they get their info of price code from here. These people, the market makers, the ECN, all others, we get our price code from these major banks through this electronic broking services. And then we, the retail traders, are able to see that price quote on our MT4, uh, on MT5, on whatsoever platform you are using to trade as a result of electronic broking services or the routers dealing 3,000 spot machine. Is that okay? I'm sure you would have uh, wondered or asked yourself, ah, so this is what this forest thing has been. Oh, I never knew, but today you know, because you came to this channel. Is that okay? I'm sure you would love to listen to more and learn more about forests through this channel. Why not subscribe? Hit the subscription button and also hit the notification bell so that anytime we post a video, you'll be the first to get it. And please always try to watch our videos to the end because uh, most of the information that are vital are mostly left at the end. So please do well to watch our videos to the end. Is that okay? So today about the history of the forest market, this is where I will end it. But in my next video, I'm going to be talking about the brokers because we are still looking at how to choose a good broker. Is that okay? You, you are still looking at how to choose a good broker. Today, you now know that there are brokers known as market makers and then ECN. So you now know, okay, we have ECN brokers. They are retail traders. We have the market makers who are also retail traders. We have the hedge funds and commercial companies. They are all there. So our aim is for you to be able to choose a good broker. And the principle to get you to a good broker is first of all, find a broker that is regulated. That was what I talked about in my last uh, episode, which was the episode four. You, you, you need to get a broker that is well regulated. And secondly, 
you need to get a broker that is not going to cheat you. That is not going to cheat you, I repeat. Is that okay? So I'll be talking about brokers in our next episode. So we'll be looking at the market makers and then the ECN brokers. Is that okay? They are actually the ones online helping with the online traders to be able to trade the forest market, to be able to buy currencies from the major banks, hold them for a while, and then we get profits in return. So it is these brokers that are helping with the online traders to do that. So we need to be able to choose a good broker. So in my new video or next video, that will be the topic, brokers. We, we will actually be doing a postmortem of all these brokers so that you understand them carefully and very well. So that when you are choosing a broker, you get the right broker to choose. So once I finish talking about brokers, you understand the concept of how a broker can cheat you and how you can also get to know that this broker is cheating you. And if you find out they are cheating you, the way to go by reporting to their regulatory bodies for proper action to be taken. Mind you, the regulatory bodies who are actually regulating the brokers are our friends. I mean, we the retail traders. They are there to help and guide us so that our interests will remain paramount so that we the retail traders will not be cheated by these banks or the brokers. That is why these uh, regulatory bodies are available. So you need to get a good one. Make sure your broker has a good regulator before you sign up to them so that when they are cheating you or they may not even cheat you because they know that their regulator is very strict and will leave them unpunished if they should do anything fishy with you. So you need to be able to get a good broker and choose from. And I'll be explaining all that in our next video. And once that is done, you can now go ahead and select any broker of your choice, sign up with them, then the real trading will begin. I am here to hold your hand till we get to the best that you need to know in Forex. If you want to become a good trader, please remain on this channel, subscribe, Recommend it to friends, show it to friends, tell people about it. Let them also come and see what you have seen. Let them also get the information that you've gotten. And I'm sure together we can build a bigger community. I know leading Forex YouTube channel will become a bigger community of Forex traders. It is just a matter of time. So just join us and always flow along with us and we'll keep on giving you the best. Until our next episode, I will say thank you for staying glued or staying glued to our channel and learning all that we present to you on a daily basis. We'll come your way with another episode. That will be episode six, and we'll be talking about brokers. Until then, take care. This is Leading Forest. We are at your service. Feel free to leave a message, send me a chat, send me an email or whatsoever, and I'll respond to your email. Thank you. I will see you again.